Hi, welcome to Podpad Studios, uh, mini edition. Now, myself and uh, Zoe, or Zoe and myself here, we've been, we've been sat reminiscing, and we were discussing, actually, the Green Cross code droid the other day. And strangely enough, the um, Green Cross code droid, with other memorabilia that belonged to Dave Prowse, has actually come up for auction uh, locally. And um, we were just saying, we were reminiscing, we were remembering when we refurbished the Green Cross code droid for Dave. Now, it's an interesting story, actually. Um, basically, we were at a Comic-Con, and a chap called A.D. Davis introduced me to another chap called Dave Prowess. Now, I'm like, what, Dave Prowess? That's like Darth Vader. You're going to introduce me to Darth Vader? And he's, yeah, yeah. And this is the nicest guy that you could possibly ever have met, by the way. Um, so anyway, I'm chatting away to Darth Vader. Can you believe it? Uh, about his other role, which of course was, he was the Green Cross Code Man. Um, and I grew up with that. I mean, I learned to cross the road with the Green Cross Code. And, you know, to actually meet the guy that was the Green Cross Code Man was amazing. But anyway, to cut a very long story, very short, he had a little robot. Now, in some of the later filming episodes, the robot was used, it kind of came along, trundled along, and it helped Mr. Prowse do the Green Cross Code bits and pieces. And we had a chat about that robot because what Dave wanted to actually do was, was it, he would love to have brought the Green Cross Code idea back. Um, but unfortunately, the robot was, it was actually given to him after filming, had gone in his shed and obviously it had been forgotten about for years and years and years. So of course, when everybody came to look at it, it wasn't really much of a robot anymore. It was more a kind of a pile of, well, it wasn't a robot. Um, so he said, could we, could we do something with it? Could we, could we refurbish it? Could we bring the Green Cross Code droid back to life? And that's what we did, what we did. Um, basically, I think it was about a week later, the, the Green Cross Code droid arrived in the studio and I got the opportunity to actually remake, rebuild, a 70s icon. You know that your motors are really noisy. You're getting it to be an old girl now, aren't you? That's why. Creaking bones. Do you know what you need? WD-40. Yeah, right. Anyway, so Green Cross Code Droid, that's what we were talking about, weren't we? So anyway, the Green Cross Code Droid turned up in the workshop. 80s, sorry, 70s. I keep saying 80s icon, I don't know why. I suppose it feels like an 80s icon, but actually it was created in the 70s. The fact that it was the original Green Cross Code Droid, I think I was a bit starstruck and also incredibly nervous because when I saw it, it was in such a state. So basically what happened is it had been made out of, it was made out of wood. And as anybody knows, wood doesn't really last very long. And of course, layers of fiberglass had been put over the wood. It was just the way it was worked up at the time. The motors were all seized. I mean, it was in a, is in a sorry state of repair. And I must admit that at one point it did go through my mind. It, is it scrap? But, you know, luckily that didn't happen. But anyway, got the chance, opened it all up, looked inside, took out several birds' nests, and basically then looked at the electronics and the way it was all working. We redid the motors, rebuilt the motors, and then they, they were fine actually. Even the wheels that were very slight, slightly perished, we kind of remade those and redid those. We got, we, we, we got all that part of it working. But I tell you what, and this is something I kept, now, I, was, I actually offered all this in a carrier bag back to Dave uh, afterwards, and he just looked at me as to say, Mark, what, what, what am I going to do with all that? Keep it as, a mem as memorabilia. Keep it as a memento of what you did for me. And the reason I couldn't throw this away was because this is the original speed controller. Now, let's just put this into perspective. This is what's well, not exactly like this, but pretty much this is a modern speed controller. So this is what has been put into the new Green Cross Code Droid, same as this girl here has got. But this is just solid state circuitry, a couple of capacitors, a couple of chips, and, and that's it. This is a work of art. This is a manual speed controller. Now, for those of you that, that know anything about electronics, we'll do some close-ups of this as well, so you can see. This is controlled with servos, with slider switches that go across different kinds of switches, that switch multiple switching units. It's just, it's a work of art that somebody, you know, created this. Even the little piece of wood that it was actually built onto, the frame, was amazing. There's a little motor here, and this little motor 
uh, controlled another worm gear, which controlled the dome, which actually made the head move round. It's, it's, it was just amazing. Um, I kept it all. I just couldn't throw it away um, because it's, it is the original electronics from a 1970s Green Cross Crow Droid. I tried to track down the people that made this, um, really searched really, really hard, but of course all the labels that were on anything have just perished. They've, they, they, they've just gone. So there was nothing inside the actual Green Cross Code Droid to show who had done this. And, and I said, when we searched, we tried to search on some of the switching, we, we couldn't find the original. Um, this was another thing that was inside. And of course, what happened was that um, the little Green Cross Code Droid spoke, but of course, um, it wasn't like these modern systems where the electronics inside, you know, I can talk to, um, I can talk to Zoe and Zoe will talk back to me. Look at that, on cue. Um, this was really very, very simple. And as you can see, this is a, an ancient radio mic. And the idea was, obviously there was a, a receiver inside um, the Green Cross Code Droid, which is connected to a, an amplifier and a speaker. And then somebody off, set off shot uh, actually made the sounds for the Green Cross Code Droid. Off, off. <laughs> Yeah, well, not as good as yours, perhaps. No, I know. But um, so you've got the microphone. So and this is all the original kit that came off it. Um, you know, Dave was just chuck it in the bin and I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't because it is, as I said, it's it's droid history in the making. So, I mean, obviously, we we, we redid all the um, all the fiberglass inside. I didn't want to touch any of the fiberglass on the outside. She, he, she, I'm not sure what what gender the Green Cross Code droid is was a bit scratched, a bit battered, and it still is, because that is how it was originally. Um, it was fitted with a modern day radio control system because the radio control system that was, that, that was, was used um, was just, yeah, you, you just couldn't use it now. You, you, it would be, it would, wouldn't be suitable. Can you hear that? Silence, WD-40. <coughs> you know, there's no point in you complaining about it. You would like it. Look, listen. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Right. Anyway, so the Green Cross Code Droid. Do you know what? I think the hardest part in the whole refurbishment of the Green Cross Code Droid was actually delivering it back to Dave. And I was so nervous. I, 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 I was so nervous that he wouldn't like what, what had been done. There were a few cosmetic changes. There had to be because certain elements of it just weren't there anymore. And, and obviously inside it looked very, very different. And of course he, he knew what it was like when he was there because he was obviously working with the uh, tech guys that were obviously running it while they were filming. Um, but we, we, got, we had a little photo shoot set up and he came along and, and he took it, took it off us and he loved it. Uh, he thought it was great. And I think it was the fact that, and that I was so proud, I was so pleased that I hadn't messed it up. Um, you know, and that we, that we managed to bring that 70s icon back to life and it and it and, it, and it's there now um you know if you want more details i at the time i was blogging everything this was in i think tw uh, 2014 i think this was i was blogging everything and you can actually see from the day that it arrived at the workshop with all the rot taking it all out refurbishing the motors putting the new electronics in all the new paint that went on it you can see it step by step day by day and read my thoughts at the time which as as, as you can probably gather were very um nervous about what what was going on here um it's a great way to sort of to to see what uh, you know what happened and how it was refurbished um so yeah so please subscribe uh and catch up with us again next week for another thrilling action-packed adventures with Podpad Studios. Bye. You're going to say bye? <coughs> no, she can't do that. You don't want me to do that, do you? Oh, well, it's not my fault. Well, you should do what you're told, shouldn't you? <coughs> well, yeah, I mean, all right.